Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and thanks for joining me again for another night out on location. I've really been privileged and given access to about 15,000 acres out here under border one skies in my favourite location to image, which is Coonabarra Brand here in New South Wales. So I've had a bit of a trek around today and found this old windmill and who doesn't love a good windmill shot? But when I got here, this, this afternoon was just absolutely stunning and I actually couldn't help myself to just grab a chair, kick back, have a beer and just soak it all in. It was absolutely stunning and there's just something special about this place overlooking the Warren Bungles National Park. It's just phenomenal. So if this afternoon's set the precedence for tonight, it's gonna to be an absolutely epic night. So let's get stuck into it. So as you guys would have guessed, no doubt, I'm gonna shoot a big arch tracked panorama. Shock, I know. <laughs> but I'm gonna get a nice big arch and panorama over the top of this old windmill here, and I've got the twins out again. Who doesn't love the twins? So twin Sigmas, um, Sigma Art 40s and twin Sony cameras. So I'm a glutton for punishment. I'm gonna have another crack at HA and RGB tracked panorama. And it's an insane amount of work, but I really, really want to get as many images as I can to try and figure out if that's the way I want to go long term. So for those people who have been asking about tips and tutorials about doing this, I am the wrong person to talk to. There's a lot better people to talk to than me because I'm still fumbling around trying to, you know, do it the best I can at the moment. So with that said, tonight's going to be a little bit different than the last couple of images I've done because this windmill is a pretty basic structure and the Milky Way is actually arching right around the South Celestial Pole, which will be pretty much bang on the center of the arch. I'm gonna shoot the foreground and the sky from the same location. I'm not gonna move the tripod, so I need to spend a bit of time and make sure I get this absolutely 100% correct so that when I do the final stitch, um, this old windmill is right in the dead center. And speaking of this old windmill, when I was talking to the old farmer and he was driving me around showing me the property, he told me that this dates back to uh, 1916, so that's really cool. I know it's not that old, but um, especially for you guys in Europe that you got stuff that's, I don't know, million old, million years old or something, but that's pretty cool. I'm a bit of a history buff, so getting the opportunity to photograph something that's 100 and whatever years old, that's pretty cool. So anyway, I'm gonna spend a bit of time, get this tracker where it needs to be. So that's the foreground all taken care of. And man, it was tricky to try and catch a time when that windmill wasn't spinning. Every now and then we get a gust of breeze and that thing will just spin for, seems like forever. So whoever made the bearings on that thing, man, you are worth every single cent. Anyway, we got it all taken care of. Um, I ended up with settings of F1.7, ISO 2000 and two minute exposures. And it all looks pretty good. Now, obviously at 40 millimeters and F1.7, it's a really, really shallow depth of field. So I simply focused on that windmill and it is what it is. I honestly don't have time to do any sort of focus stacking or anything like that before I need to start shooting this guy. So um, it is what it is. Now, as far as the composition itself goes and where I've positioned this tripod, I've put it in a really specific position, obviously not just about where that windmill lines up with the sky, but also the distance away from the windmill itself. And when I shoot panoramas, I normally try and keep the foreground object and the sky somewhat in proportion so that the foreground doesn't look too small um, or the foreground doesn't look too big. But I've deliberately put my tripod in a position today. So the, the foreground itself is actually gonna look a little bit smaller in the final stitch than what it normally does in my images. And I've done it for a very specific reason. When I got out here today, I just felt like, I just felt like an ant under massive skies. I've got full 360 de degree views of the horizon and I just felt tiny under a massive, massive sky. So I wanted to try and portray that in the image tonight. So that's why I've put my tripod in this position. So the foreground looks small and the sky looks really, really big. And you guys know, when you stand out here and look up and you can just see, you know, 
the Galaxy overhead, it's just phenomenal and you feel really, really small. So hopefully that, that feeling comes across in the final image. Now, as far as the sky goes, I'm gonna be shooting a Hydrogen Alpha RGB um, tracked panorama, obviously. So um, the lenses are Sigma Art 40 lenses. Taking care of the RGB will be a Sony A7R2, which is Hydrogen Alpha modified. Taking care of the, uh, the Hydrogen Alpha section will be a full spectrum modified Sony A7S with an astronomic 12 nanometer filter. Now, settings wise, I'm gonna go with F1.7 for the RGB, two minute exposures and ISO 640. And for the Hydrogen Alpha, I'm gonna go ISO 3200 F2 and two minute exposures. And we'll just see how we go with that. I may play around with those settings on the Hydrogen Alpha. I'm still trying to get used to what the best settings are. And it's obviously not just about post-processing. I need to try and figure out the best, the best settings uh, in the field for that Hydrogen Alpha narrowband. So we'll see how we go. Anyway, let's get stuck into this guy. So that's the sky all taken care of and it went pretty smoothly. I'm starting to get used to the GTI mount for track panoramas with the twin camera set up. So it was a really, really enjoyable experience just kicking back and in, enjoying the night sky. Um, there's a bit of air glow about, so we'll just have to wait and see how that comes up in post-production. So thanks again for joining me out under the stars. I really, really appreciate it. I hope you guys enjoy the image. And if you want to grab some merch, help support the channel, jump over onto my website. It's all on there, shirts, hoodies, Beanies, caps, all sorts of stuff, so go and check it out. Until next time, peace guys.